So now we know that if the contents of the text box cannot be converted to an integer, then the value 0 will be stored in the variable num. What would happen if we actually entered the value 0 in the text box? We can see that this also results in 0 being stored in num. But then this raises an issue for us. How would our program distinguish between entering an integer value 0 and storing it in num and entering a non-integer value and having tripars store 0 in num because the conversion failed? It turns out that the tripars method, apart from storing a value in the variable num, also returns a value of true or false to indicate if the conversion was successful or not. If the conversion is successful, the value true is returned. If not, the value false is returned. So let's include a line in our code to display the value returned by the tripars method. So here's the line of code to do this. And we've written the expression containing the tripars method in the brackets for our output to the list box. This will re result in the value returned by the method being displayed in the list box. Now let's run our program again with our inputs and see what happens. And if we try 15, we'll see the value 15 is displayed and the value returned by the tripars method is true, meaning that the conversion succeeded. Let's try 12.7. This time the tripars method is unable to do the conversion. It stores 0 in the variable num and returns the value false. Now let's try our string. Again 0 is stored in num and the value false is returned, meaning that the conversion didn't work. Finally, we try an actual integer value 0. This time 0 is stored in num, but the value true is returned by the tripars method, meaning that what we actually entered in our text box was an integer. This gives us a way of distinguishing between entering 0 and a non-integer value both of which would cause 0 to be stored in num. If a 0 is entered, tripars returns true. But if a non-integer value is entered, tripars will return false. So we can use this value returned by tripars to check for invalid input and, if we wish, display an appropriate message to the user. So let's modify our code so that it will store and display valid input but will display an error message if the input is not valid. We'll need to use an if statement to do this. And here's the code required to do this. In the condition of the if statement we check if the value returned by the tripars method is true. If it is, then the value will have been stored in num and we display num. If the conversion failed, then tripars will have returned false and we display our error message. Now we'll try our program again with two values, 0 and 12.7. Both of these will cause, cause the value 0 to be stored in num, but only 0 itself is a valid input. Let's see if our program can distinguish between them. We try 0 first, and we see that the tripars succeeds in the conversion, stores the value 0 in num, returns true, 
and we display num. Now we try 12.7. This time the try parse fails in the conversion. Although it stores zero in num, because the method returns false, our code will display an error message. So our program can now distinguish between a valid input of zero being stored in num and an invalid input causing zero to be stored in num by simply looking at the value returned by the tripars method, in other words, true or false. In this lesson, we have looked at the tripars method for the integer data type. Other numeric data types, such as double or single, also have tripars methods which work in a similar way, returning true if the conversion to the type succeeds and false if it does not. And to use these, we would write double dot tripars or single dot tripars instead of integer dot tripars. To check your understanding of the method, a good exercise would be to rewrite our program to accept only double values. This would involve declaring num as a double and using the double dot tripars method. So the tripars method is very important for us as it provides us with a method that can be used to prevent our programs generating an error when we attempt to store non-numeric values such as strings entered in text boxes in numeric variables. And we begin to use the tripars more and more in future lessons.